Hi, this is Daryl Trimble from SP Marketplace. I'm here with Declan Coleman, owner of DC Solutions. And today we'll be covering SP Data Manager, a simple but powerful Excel-based data migration, management, and document migration tool for SharePoint, both online and on-premise. A little bit about SP Marketplace. We are the leader in out-of-the-box business solutions for Office 365. Our mission is to transform your business in the cloud. We started in 2012, are located in Northern California, and our target market is small to medium organizations. Today, we have over 700 organizations worldwide using our SP Business Suite business applications. Let's take a look at the SP Data Manager. Introduction to SP Data Manager. Turn your MS Excel into a powerful data management tool for SharePoint. So what can you do with SP Data Manager? Well, you can take data management in SharePoint to a whole nother level. You can do everything from importing data into a new SharePoint list or into existing SharePoint lists, or even inserting data or appending data to a SharePoint list. You can migrate data from one SharePoint list to another or many lists. You can do a bulk update of SP list data for instance, for changing statuses or maybe reassigning salespeople to different uh, accounts in your CRM data. You can archive and restore SP list data. For instance, if you have a SharePoint list that's gonna be going over 5,000, you can use this to prevent that from happening and keep it in an archive on Excel and then be able to restore it item by item whenever you want to. You can import documents into SP Libs from your file shares or your own computer libraries, and you can even create metadata while you're doing that. You can do bulk or selective deletes of list items, if you get, for instance, getting rid of duplicates out there in certain lists. You can select data using SP views or rows to do filtering, and you can even do easy field mapping and filtering of specific fields to other fields when going from migration list to another migration list. You can, there's support for lookups, users, choice field types, and it really allows you to take advantage of the powerful Excel data manipulation to actually change the data and then push it back into SharePoint. So what is Data Manager? It's an Excel add-in. And what it does is it allows you to turn your Excel into a SharePoint data and document tool. It's designed for business power users. So let's take a look at it. This is actually the dropdown that you have in Excel, and you can see the different components of the products. Let's take a look at how you might use it. First of all, in the settings area, you connect to your SharePoint sites. It could be one or more sites and provide uh, direct connection to it. Then you identify your source lists or libraries as well as destination lists and libraries. Next, you define the list mapping or library mapping. This is where you actually map Excel columns to SharePoint list columns. Next, you retrieve data or documents from the source. If it's from one SharePoint list to another, you could actually bring the data down. If it's something that you're bringing in from another system, you might use the data connectivity capabilities of Excel to bring it in from databases, or you might just have an export from another legacy system or something. Once you get the data in, it brings it into the columns, you can modify, edit, or change the data in Excel using some of the powerful features of find and replace and other things in Excel. Then you can actually take the resulting data, either migrate it to a new SharePoint list or library. You can update the existing SharePoint list or library, insert new data into a SharePoint list or library as well. And again, once again, it supports all SP columns, not only lookups, but multiple lookups, users, choice fields, and more. At this point, I'll turn it over to Deck for the demo. Thanks, Daryl. My name is Declan Coleman, and I'm the creator of SP Data Manager. I've been working in SharePoint for about 10 years, and I've been a professional developer for about 19 years. And this is the culmination of three years' work. It's got an underlying framework, which took a long time to develop. Essentially, it's just meant to make people's lives easier. It makes data access and data updating, inserting and deleting all easier by batching those processes and making them easily accessible through Microsoft Excel. Okay, so let's take a look at our SP Data Manager ribbon layout in Excel in a little bit more detail. So over in the left-hand side, we've got settings. 
Now in here, this is where we set up our site connections. So this, these are our connections for SP Data Manager to our SharePoint sites. You can see I have an Office 365 site set up here. If I go into New, you can see that I can, I can select either Office 365 or on-premise connections. You can have multiple connections at the same time and transfer data between them, no problem. I'm going to give it a unique site connection name. You can name it anything you want. Uh, you want to put in a SharePoint site URL. Domain is normally not used, but you can use your SharePoint username and SharePoint password and then press test sign on Office 365. If you get successful, then you can save and then you have already configured your site connection. Let's pop out of here for a second. The main other important piece of the settings is where you select your source lists. So I've added a site connection which is here, and I have all these lists that are currently connected, but if I want to connect a new list, I hit new, and then I select the list, and these are sourced directly from the server using the site connection settings. So I can select any list, and it basically will bring it down with all the field settings that are associated with that particular list. If I go into advanced settings on the project task, what is it? project task progress list, I can see that you can set formats on field types and do various other actions against those field types. Let's go back out here. So this is where we set up our, our SharePoint lists. Once we have our list connected, we can move on to uh, setting up mappings for those particular lists to map the data between SharePoint and Excel. Let's take a look at the list data, insert, modify, and batch deleting area of SP Data Manager's ribbon. Okay, this is this section right here to the right-hand side of the settings area. So the first up, you've got the Define SP List Mapping. This is where you make your mapping between the spreadsheet or the workbook that you have open and your SharePoint list that you actually want to put data in, retrieve data from, a batch update, and do tasks on. So essentially, this is where you create those mappings. The next up is the drop-down, which displays current mappings that have already been created. And just below that, we have the Apply Selected. Now, this Apply Selected will apply the selected mapping from this drop-down to the currently active workbook. Once you've applied selected, the retrieve SP data bot button uh, enables. This gives you the ability to draw down all of the data from the particular list that you've mapped to. Once you retrieve the data, the further three buttons on this section become active. So update SP data, data migrate SP data, and delete SP data all become active. And they basically do what they say on the buttons. Within update SP data, you get the option to both modify and insert new data. Migrate gives you the option to map fields between one SharePoint list in one site and a new SharePoint list in a different site. And that, those sites can be either Office 365 or on-premise and vice versa. And delete SP data gives you the option to batch delete items based on a selected view that you've selected within your mapping itself. So all of these basically give you a lot of options and control of your list data on a batch level and are really powerful tools for super users or developers. Now let's take a look at the document library upload section of the ribbon. So on the left hand side of this particular section we have define SP file lib mapping. It's very similar to the define SP list mapping although it is to file libraries. Now in a very similar way we can create new mappings when we go into this section and these mappings then appear in this drop down which we can then apply to the workbook. So it's the very same as the list mappings, but this is for document libraries. So we apply selected, and basically it's going to add in the various properties that we add to from the files, from that particular file library, for each file of that file library. It's going to add these as columns in a similar way to add each SP list column as a column in Excel to match the field in, SharePoint, in the SharePoint list. So once we have applied selected, we can hit retrieve file details, and that's going to bring down a, a details of the file and as well as that, all of the properties that are attached to that file that we've selected in our mapping. And that will draw them down into the current workbook that we have active on our desktop. Once again, after we've done that, the update properties, migrate files, and delete SP data buttons all become available. We can update the properties in a batch format so we can make changes to the spreadsheet as a whole and then in a one-click manner, update all of the properties to the files. This, this way we can reassign files to users. We can, you know, basically change which files are accessed by whom and when, all at the touch of a button. Uh, migrate files also becomes active, and this gives us the option to migrate files from either 
one SharePoint site to another SharePoint site, be that Office 365 or on-premise, or in fact uh, upload files from a file share and upload them into our new SharePoint file library um, with properties included at the same time. And it also gives us the option to batch delete all of those files or any files that are selected within a particular view on a file library or document library and we can do that all at the particular button as well in the very same manner as we can do with list items. Once again, this adds to a, a tremendous amount of power for power users and also developers who want to test new systems. Let's take a look at a common scenario where we can use SP Data Manager to upload data from our legacy database system into our new SharePoint site and list and still have our lookups connected and our users, users connected. So here we have some raw data that was extracted from our database in the CSV format, opened up in Excel, and here we have it. Now we want to get this data into our new SharePoint list on our SharePoint site with project milestones list. We have our fields already created. We have a new field called status that we don't have in our data, but we can add that in also. So our first step is going to be to create a new list mapping which will map this data to a SharePoint list. Go in and create a new worksheet mapping. We want to select our site that we've added earlier in the site settings. Select our list that we have added in the source lists. And then select a view for those available on that particular list. We then want to select a destination sheet and a start cell where our mapping is going to look for its data. Select sheet 1 and select A1 of that sheet. Below this we have the fields that are available in the list. These are taken directly from SharePoint. So we can select any of these and add them into our selected fields for our mapping. So we already have ID and title, which are mandatory fields that are used by SP Data Manager. So we have to add the rest of our fields in. We have title, project name, time to complete, main contact, and the rest of the fields. We also have an additional staffs field, which we haven't entered yet, but we will have to add. So, add project name by double-clicking. All the rest of them that we need. We can move our fields up and down to match their position on the Excel spreadsheet behind. And that looks good. We have status at the end, and we'll add that now. So let's save that. Now we've got that mapping saved, which is quite an easy task. And what we need to do to match our data to the mapping is insert a new field for ID here. And we're going to have a status field at the other end. Now we've created our mapping, so it'll appear in the drop-down of the list mappings. So we select it and select Apply, and then we will apply this mapping to our current spreadsheet, the currently active spreadsheet. Now, when this is go happening, so we're going to select our project milestones mapping that we've just created, and we're going to apply it to the current spreadsheet. Hit apply, select yes, and then as SP Data Manager goes, finds out all the lookup details that are currently available in the lists, in the lookup lists on SharePoint, gets all the details, matches them to a sheet. We can see that this worked because we have all of our lookups that are available in our lookup list from SharePoint, available in drop-downs in the actual cells. Now, this is only available in the first row of data. When you select other rows, you'll see that the drop-downs aren't available. However, if you wish to add them to that row, simply select the row that you require and click Add Row Choices. All of the choices available for all lookup choice fields and user fields will then become available as drop-downs on that particular row and available to select. Now, we added in our ID field, but we don't have any IDs for these because they haven't actually been added to SharePoint yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit N and we're going to say that's going to be a new record and we're going to insert it. And then we'll drag this down and say that, well, all these records are going to be N and we're going to insert them all. Let's see if we can actually get it correct. We have N against all these records, and now all we have to do is simply hit Update, Insert, and hit Go. The data gets read, all hooked up with lookups, users, 
that together in a camel statement and insert it into the SharePoint list. Altogether, it takes 10 seconds to do 67 records. Let's go and take a look at our list and see what we've got. Nothing in there to start with. Let's hit refresh and see what we've got now. So there we go. We've got all our new items added. We've got lookups that are looking up correctly to the correct lists. We've got users hooked up correctly. We've got our one status that we selected added in also. And all our, all our records are inserted. Okay, so we've got our data into SharePoint. Now we've got we've still got this and we don't have IDs, so let's just hit this here, highlight all the data and just hit delete. Simple as that. Do that and then hit retrieve data. And then it goes and gets all the data again from the server. Now you know that that's come directly from the server. So it looks exactly the same as before, but actually it's come directly from the server. We can see here the ID field over in the far left. This means we can do anything with the data. We can update it, we can delete it. We can do all of this in a batch and super fast. So let's see what else we want to do. Okay, so here on the first row, we've got drop downs, okay? Now these are sourced directly from the server. This has all the lookup details that I found in the lookup list, which is linked to the lookup field in the actual list on the server. So we can select any of these on old. We can hit update and go modify existing. We don't want to add new. We want to modify existing. It's going to take them all. We didn't limit it because it's such, so, it's such a small record set that even these few are only going to take a few seconds, probably less seconds than it would take for us to click that and make a selection here. So 10 seconds. We could close and check our list. Let's have a look at it. Is the change made or isn't it? Let's, let's just do a quick. Oh, there we go. On hold right there. No problem. We can do that across the board for everything. We can drag the entire lot down and update it in exactly the same amount of time. Okay, now if we click down here, so let's take a look at the batch delete capabilities of SP Data Manager. Okay, I've opened up Excel. I want to do it. A new blank workbook and then I want to apply my mapping to it and I'll download all of the data that's currently there. By downloading the data I get the IDs and I have all the details and that means the SP Data Manager can go and batch delete the whole lot if it actually is requested. Now that also gives you a safety factor because you've already got the data in this spreadsheet. So if you do delete it and you change your mind you can update it again, insert it, and it will be exactly the same, have the same lookups and users selected, which is great. So let's hit delete and see where we go. I just want to delete them all. I'm just saying, yep, delete everything from there. Six, seven items, two seconds. Let's go and check our list. It's all gone. Everything is gone. In normal circumstances, you might start freaking out at this stage, but luckily, it's right here. Now, at any stage, I can just go back and say, well, let's just insert it again. Really could not be easier. So it took uh, three seconds to delete it, and it's probably going to take about 10 seconds. There we go, 10 seconds to insert it again. Let's check our list and see what we've got there now. And all our records are back in there, including our lookups, the same as they were before. Now the IDs do change, so that's you do have to watch out for that. But in any main list, that's actually not going to be too much of an issue. And you can actually use SP Data Manager to do updates on them as well. So, so you can see how you can use SP Data Manager to archive old items or historical items and save them into an offline format of Excel workbooks. Um, it also has the added benefit that you can go into those Excel workbooks anytime and search through this data and find anything that you might want without having to restore it back into SharePoint. But if you actually do want to restore it back into SharePoint, you see how easy it is and how quickly it can be done. So we can see here that we have all our data down from the server again. Here we have our lookups. We got them in their drop downs. But they only appear on the first row, as you can see. So we've got a user drop down here. We've got this lookup drop down and this lookup drop down. But if we click down here, we don't see them, which means that we can't actually select them. But if you do want to see them, all you have to do is select your row, anywhere on the row, hit Add Row Choices. And it will automatically add them for the fields that are lookups or users or choices on that particular row. This makes it easy when you need to edit something quickly. Just hit Update and get it done in a fraction of the time that you would normally have to do on SharePoint.
But wait, I hear you say, we've also got a, a document library. We need to put our documents in there too, and it's on the same site. And we also need to link that in with the project type too. So for each project type, we know what documents are associated with. So we've got to be able to do that too, eh? Right, let's take a look at how we do that then. First off, let's go to file. And let's do a new workbook. And instead of making a list mapping, we're going to actually go in here and make a file library mapping instead. Now it's much the same as before. We can go in here, we select our site that we've already set up. In this case, it goes and actually checks live for libraries. Let's find our project documentation library. There it is. Select that, and then we're going to load in the views that are available. And let's select all document. And now, same as for the list items, we're going to go and enter our sheet and our cell that we want to begin the top left with the grid of data that we're going to download. So we've got ID, URL, path, and name here. They're the mandatory fields for SP Data Manager this time. So we also want to put in our project type, which is a look. Let's save. Let's save that. We'll add, and then we see that's available as a new document library mapping. And we can hit apply selected on this particular notebook. And this time we see these buttons are actually activated rather than the list buttons. And we can tab back to our other list mapping and we can see that it knows which one is which. And let's go back to our library mapping and let's retrieve some details. Let's do retrieve details. And there's no items because we don't have anything in there. But what we actually want to do is we want to upload some items that we have on our hard drive and we want to get them quickly into our document library while also mapping the project type at the same time. So let's see. Well, we have our lookup stem, so we, we know we have them. So all we have to do is select over on this far side. We get file details, which is going to be able to allow us to go onto, onto a file share and select the files that we want to upload. So here, here we have some ready-made ones that we're going to try out. See if we can upload them all. Okay, let's spread it out a bit so we can see everything clearly. And let's just mark them all as, as general as a look at so We might as well do that at the same time as we upload the files, right? Okay, let's do it. This time we want to go migrate files. And we're going to say, well, we're going to that site and we're going to the project documentation document library. Now we can select any other library. You can actually use this to migrate from one site to another site as well. But it will automatically map these fields for you because you're selecting the same site, uh, the same list as the mapping refers to. So let's just go go. We can also limit it by rows, but we don't want to here. And let's just hit uh, migrate. And now it should go and do exactly the same as it did for list items, except this time it's actually going to the correct location on the file path and then getting the document and uploading it as a binary file. Now it's going to chug through these for a little while. Depending on the size of the files and the number of files that you're setting up, it may take a while. Okay, so we're finished now, and it took 89 seconds for a total of 14 files to be uploaded. Let's just go and take a look at our site now and see what's there. Originally, obviously, we had no files. Now that we've run our process on SP Data Manager, all the files are uploaded, and it only took 89 seconds. Plus, we have our project types already set. So you can see how easy it is to upload files straight from your hard drive, and even migrate them from other sites, and directly into a new site, and also update the properties at the same time. So let's take a look at something else we can do with this data access capability. Okay, so Brad M here was our main contact on this particular project. Unfortunately, Brad M has lost his job, and now John M is in on the job. So what we need to do is actually replace Brad M across our board in our SharePoint list with John M. Now, we don't really want to have to go and do every single list item individually. So all we'll do instead is do a find to replace in Excel. Let's search for Brad M and replace it with John M. Let's replace all. John M has been replaced across the board. It's so easy. Now just hit update, modify existing items, hit modify, let SP Data Manager do the work for you. In just a few seconds, the update is done, nine seconds. And then we see our changes in our spreadsheet represented across the board in our SharePoint lists. This makes it so easy to change. If we want to add new lookups, we just add new lookups to the lists and then update the data automatically using SP Data Manager. It could not be easier. Well, thanks, Beck. That was a great demonstration. 
We're going to open up for questions now. We just want to remind everybody that you can get a free trial of SP Data Manager on our site, spmarketplace.com slash sp-datamanager.html. Okay, let's open up for questions.